here, whether you're in person or on a screen somewhere. I made a joke a week or so ago that the church always listed to this side because everybody sat on the, that side. Now the church is listing to this side. <laughs> just goes back and forth. But that's all right. You're here. doesn't matter where you sit. So um, two uh, announcements before we begin. I mentioned to you last week uh, about our bishop selection. Uh, our new bishop is a neighbor, Stacy Fiddler from St. John in Rock Island. So um, the election kind of went back and forth, and she ended up winning almost in a landslide. So um, she starts her term in September. There's a lot of bishop transition stuff that happens, and, but she will be our bishop as of September. Uh, and then just to mention, we had to, at 9 o'clock, we had a baptism. Uh, Hudson Foster Sheck, you might recognize the last name. Um, yes, Hudson is the great-grandson of Clyde and Donna, so um, that was really fun, too. So uh, that being said, let's start with some songs. Let's uh, stand this morning as we sing and lift our voices.
take a moment for prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out on this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. Bring true, bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, hungry, and sick. 
bring peace to any experiencing mental illness, that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. And we ask that you hear now our prayers for those in our lives and for those around the world as we offer them with our voices or with our hearts. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. Lord, we pray for our bishop-elect, Stacy. We ask that you inspire her, hold her in your love, give her strength for the days ahead. Help us to pray for her and with her. And finally, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and fulfilled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Please be seated. Debbie? Oops. <laughs> Can you pick this up? Thank you. Yeah. It's the problem with the chair. Well, good morning. Good morning. So, um, this past week, on Monday Fun Day, we talked about superheroes. And upstairs this morning, Katie and I worked with the kids on superheroes as well. And I wanted to read today from Luke 19.10. And it says, For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. So um, I'm looking over here at Dan and Jake and Katie, um, who I know are superhero enthusiasts. But I want you to think about, like, who is your favorite superhero, Dan? Batman? Okay, why do you like Batman? Because he's smart and cool. Okay. Okay. Um, what about you, Jake? Oh, you were going to say, well, you could still say Batman. <laughs> okay. Do you have a different reason why you like Batman? <laughs> Need some think time. He looks cool. <laughs> and he's rich. Wow. Okay. Um, Donna, why do you like the word? Oh, wow. Okay. Katie, who's your favorite superhero? Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Why is Nightcrawler your favorite? He's intelligent and friendly to everyone. Okay. All right. So we were talking with the kids upstairs that Jesus should be our favorite superhero, partly because he was selfless, right? He put the needs of others above his own, right? And we were talking, we actually did a video where it talked about the different weaknesses of different superheroes. Um, one of them was actually Batman. And it said that Batman's pretty lonely, actually. But if we think about Jesus, Jesus was a friend to everyone. Right? And then, let's see, who was the other one? Superman. 
Superman actually had some really good qualities, but what was his weakness? Kryptonite, right? But nothing could ever fully defeat Jesus Christ, right? And that's what we talked about. And then we also talked about the Hulk, which it was an interesting video because it talked about how he had two personalities, right? Bruce Banner, who was smart and controlled, and the Incredible Hulk, who basically couldn't control his anger, right? And if we think about Jesus Christ, he also was not only God, but he was also fully man. But he gave us an example of how we could love others and have self-control and through the fruits of the Spirit become more like him through his Holy Spirit. Correct? So today I want you to reflect on how Jesus is our superhero and that because of our Heavenly Father, God, we can have that same power, right? Okay, so we're going to do a prayer now. Okay. Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus and help us to become more like him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You help me with she here. All right, where did that go? Right there. The gospel today is from Luke, the eighth chapter. Then. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times, whew, wow. <laughs> for many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there was on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down to the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. He got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus has done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Doug, I'm going to go rogue again. This is where I belong. 
This is a very happy day. Very happy day indeed. Three important things happen at Trinity today, and they're all related. Hopefully I can get you to believe me on that. The first is, it's Juneteenth. So on January 1st, 1863, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. But that didn't do a whole lot at that moment. It didn't throw open the doors and chains didn't magically drop off. It took a long time for emancipation to really take hold. And it wasn't until June 19th, 1865, two and a half years later, that the last outpost in Galveston, Texas, was reached by, the federal, by federal soldiers to uh, enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. So we remember Juneteenth, and as, as of last year, as a federal holiday. We remember it as the day that officially the chains were broken. Now, we know that we still have a long way to go. But at least we remember today that there's been little progress. The second thing is, it's Father's Day. And that's the day when we, like Mother's Day, we remember people who are fathers of their own children or stepfathers or people who are mentors to, uh, you know, men who are mentors to other people, whatever it is, somebody who plays a fatherly role. And as a dad, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those days, a lot, of, a lot of dads around the world or around, at least around this country will get a card today that says, world's greatest dad. And that is a lot to live up to. <laughs> How do we know if you're the world's greatest dad? Is there a, is there a list somewhere? <laughs> Somebody's dad could be the greatest dad to their kid, or, and, and in another kid's eyes could be not so great. Who knows? But we dads and moms and really anybody who is in other people's lives in a, in a mentoring or even authoritative way can easily, easily fall into a trap, I would say a kind of prison, a kind of chains, that's always looking to be better. <laughs> well, thanks for the card, son. And inside we're thinking, oh, but I could be better. I yelled at you last week. I shouldn't have done that. Right? I shouldn't have worked so much. I shouldn't have made you eat peas. <laughs> Whatever it might be, right? We, we fall into that trap because it's a human thing. And especially if you have any kinds of responsibilities in your life, you know that it's so easy to always think, oh my God, I could be better. I could do more. I could whatever. And I would suggest to you that that's a kind of chains, that's a kind of prison, that's a kind of demon, really, that haunts us, that needs to be cast out. And finally, as I told you this morning, we had a baptism. And baptism is the church's way, or a way, at least, in the church to say, you are God's child, don't forget that, and the demons that you will face throughout your life have been cast out by Jesus, have been defeated, just like the man in the story. Your demons, too, that cry out for relief, that cry out for release, whatever it might be, Jesus has said, on the cross, you're free. Now just believe it. And stop acting like you're still in chains. Stop acting like you're not worthy of that freedom. I, I think we'd be hard-pressed, although the people of Israel, when they were leaving Egypt, said, oh, maybe, you know, they left slavery and, and, and they were crossing 
in, into the wilderness, and a lot of them said, you know, maybe slavery wasn't so bad. I'd be hard-pressed to think that on that Juneteenth, that first Juneteenth, that anyone said to those federal soldiers, nah, I'll stay. <laughs> maybe. But you see, we all have those demons. We are all chained. We all need to be emancipated in some way. Freed from those things that hold us from real freedom. Now certainly, those of us in this room, you know, we're, we're not suffering like what we remember in American slavery. However... However, we are imprisoned. We do have demons. Some of that, like back in the day and today, some of that is the demon of racism or white supremacy or whatever it might be, looking at one person and saying, uh, you might be nice, but you're not me. It might be the demon of some kind of uh, uh, substance abuse problem. It could be the demon of something you did in your past and you just can't get past it. You feel, you feel guilty or you feel, oh, if anyone ever found out this about me, they'd never talk to me again. I guarantee you, I do. We all have demons. There's, all, there's something that haunts us. Something that needs to be driven out by the promise, the absolute promise that God loves us even still. And that we can release that to Him. We can. He calls out to us to do so. And then he says, like to the guy in the, in the story, you are free. Now go tell others about it. <laughs> go tell others what it's like to live in freedom. That's your homework. But one last thing. There's a demon in the church. There's a demon in this church. I don't think it's me. But we'll see. <laughs> Time will tell. But there is a demon among us, and it's been among us for a long time. And we have served it unknowingly or unwittingly, or maybe on purpose. We have served it, and it is hurting us, and it is time to have it driven out. We had our Synod Assembly this past two weeks, partly on Zoom and partly in person, just this weekend in Augustana. The Synod Assembly is not in itself a demon. However, <laughs> however, over the last 30 years that I've gone to Synod Assemblies in four different synods, I, I can barely stand them. And the reason is that the dominant talk over that past 30 years is, oh, woe is us. The church is just nothing but old people now. Where are all the young people? Everything's diminishing. It's not like it used to be. The rural areas are getting less. The urban areas are getting more dangerous and violent. Oh! <laughs> like Scarlett O'Hara and uh, Gone with the Wind. Oh! <laughs> Nothing but tales of woe. And then very, very generalized ideas of what we could do to fix it. After 30 years of that, you start to think, oh... What's the point? And then it occurred to me, we have this demon among us. And if we could just exercise that demon, 
maybe some of that talk would go away. Do you know what that demon is? It's this. Do you know what this is? This is the book in which we record attendance at church. You know, it sits right out there, but not anymore. I'm firing this book today. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. One of the things you also hear at synod assemblies and in churches like ours, where are the numbers? Where are the people? Every month, at the council meeting. How much money do we have? How much money don't we have? How's our endowment doing? Is it good or is it bad? Numbers, 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 and they are meaningless. If there were 50 more people in, sitting next to you right now, would God be more praised? Would this sermon be better? <laughs> if there were 50 less people sitting in the room right now, would God be going, oh, what happened to Trinity? <laughs> Not enough people worshiping me. Would the sermon be worse? Would you be any less important in the eyes of God? Remember what Jesus said, two or more are gathered, there am I. Anybody else sick of looking across the river and going, oh, I wish we could be them? I am. They're them and we're us. And in the eyes of God, we're both enough. If we just had five more kids in Sunday school, then Jesus would be happy. Doesn't that just sound ridiculous when you say it out loud? Doesn't it just sound crazy? You know? We worry more about the people who aren't in these pews than we do about you who are. That's pretty dumb. Because you're here, and you have real needs, and you need to and want to hear the gospel. We should celebrate that. If there were five, if there was one, if there were none, I'd still stand up there and pray. I did for a year, remember? <laughs> there was nobody here. Dave was here. He filmed. <laughs> Tom was here occasionally when we, you know, we want to add some music. But there was nobody here. Was God any less praised? Was Jesus any less recognized as Savior? Did the Holy Spirit take the year off and go to South Beach? <laughs> I don't think so. And likewise... If we were shoulder to shoulder in here every Sunday, I was pastor of that church once. It's no more or less spiritually alive than any other church. The numbers don't matter. They don't matter to Jesus. They shouldn't matter to us. We have got to drive that demon out of our midst and stop talking about the numbers, and stop measuring our worth by some artificial standard. Because your worth is already measured and stamped good. It's in the first and second chapter of Genesis. I created you. You're good. It's very good. Thank you. See? You keep talking like that, we'll have more kids in Sunday school. <laughs> And then it'll be worth having you here. <laughs> right? But again, doesn't that sound crazy when we say it out loud? 
Yes, we'd love it if the place was full, but not because that makes us a better church. We want people to be here so they, like you, can hear the message of love and forgiveness and grace that they might be able to say, wow, you mean my demons are covered by Jesus? You mean this doesn't have to break me down and haunt me every day of my life? Yeah, that's why we want more people, so they can hear the word. Not because we're going to be better. When all is said and done, it's not like we're going to get a trophy right? You die, you're at the pearly gates. Congratulations, you guys were first. (laughs) What does that get you, right? This is not a contest. And Jesus showed us by driving out demons of all sorts of people, not just in today's story. He didn't drive out those demons and then say, now get to church and take your envelope with you He just said, go, be free, and tell other people how great this is. Because then we can set about driving out the demons of racism and sexism and poverty and all the things that haunt our culture. But that only happens when you have free people recognizing, just like on Juneteenth, the humanity in the eyes of God that says all people should be free. Not because of a constitution, not because of a proclamation, but because God said so. All people should be free. So, recognize your freedom. Use it. And invite others so they can hear this gift that we have called grace. Amen. to ask you to do what we did at 9 o'clock. Raise your hand. Wave (laughs) bye-bye. Bye, book. Bye, obsession with numbers. Bye. Because you're not going to see this again. (laughs) At least not in my time. Bye. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind.
one time love coming after me. There's no wall you won't break down. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, don't have to be. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, don't have to be. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you Let's take a moment and prepare ourselves to receive this meal by offering our confession to God. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your illness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. If you ever doubt for one moment that either there is no Holy Spirit or that the Holy Spirit is not terribly active. Dave Moyman and I do not talk about music, the sermon, and he does the uh, confessions. And yet, <laughs> the themes seem to come together. Somehow, we really don't talk about it. Not only because I think we trust each other, but we trust the Spirit. And so far, the Spirit seems to be coming through. <laughs> so, thanks for that confession. And, likewise, Jesus, on that night when he knew things were happening, he knew that no matter what happened, that he was free because God said so. And not chains and not whips and not a cross could make him not free. And so in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
Thank you all for being here. Really glad that you were able to join us in whatever way that you were able to join us. And we hope you have a, a great week. Um, we have a final song, right? Let's stand together as we uh, prepare to leave worship today.